I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus goes with me. On him I can depend. I know I have salvation. Feel good in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. I am determined. Jesus goes with me, on him I can depend, I know I have salvation, feel it in my soul, I am determined to hold out to the end. Good morning, good morning, good morning, God bless you, good morning, good morning, good morning. you good morning good morning well good morning and praise Lord everybody and welcome to morning prayer with pastor Reginald Davis it is indeed a pleasure and an honor to be able to share with you this morning. And as we come on, if you want to um, share this prayer time with someone you care about, someone you love, please feel free to share that with them so that they can join us today in prayer. So you can share this on your page so others can join and be a part of the prayer time this morning. We're thankful to the Lord for another day. Thank God for another Sunday, another Lord's Day, and for what the Lord is going to do for us today. As always, if you have a prayer request, you can place it in the chat so we can take that before the Lord in prayer. Um, as we pray, if it's of a more private nature, you can certainly share it um, to me through Messenger. It's just simply Reginald Davis, no title, just Reginald Davis. But it's a blessing to be alive. It's a blessing to um, have the mind and the desire to pray. And we believe that God does indeed hear and answer prayer. Sister Green praying for your family. Yes. Hallelujah. And many bereaved families today. The Lord continues to take us through. And he continues to give grace even for those challenging um, situations in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, I want to go to the Word, and we are still in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, and this 13th chapter has just brought so many things, so many things um, to light. We've talked about um, service, we've talked about betrayal, we've talked about love, and as we conclude the 13th chapter, we are once again challenged by the word of God. St. John chapter 13 and verse number 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Are you really sure this is today's lesson are you really sure you know people say a lot of things people make a lot of confessions people make a lot of statements 
And I, I, I will not say that everyone who makes a statement is insincere. But in so many cases, a lot of statements are made without truly knowing the ramifications, the impact, the long-term effects of the statements. I think people say it sometimes to, because it's what they want to believe about themselves. I think they say it because, um, sometimes because they do want to impress other people. I think they say it in an attempt to even impress God. You know, we try to impress God sometimes. We try to um, tell God things about ourselves in an attempt to convince him of our fidelity, our spiritual fortitude, our piety, our strength, our holiness. We say things to God. The only thing, the only problem with saying things to God is that he knows the truth about us. You are always better off being real with God because he knows the truth. You are always better off being real with God because he knows you. David said, Lord, you know my uprising. You know my down sitting. You know my thoughts are far off. You, you know me. When, when I, I confront with other people, I confront with the church, I confront with the bishop, I confront with the saints, I confront with the pastor, but Lord, I can't front with you. Because you know me. You know my thoughts are far off. You know my end from the beginning. You know everything about me. And so it is always better for me to be real. Now, there is a form of self-delusion. And self-delusion is when you believe some things about yourself that perhaps are not as true as you would like them to be. You know, most of us are not as physically strong as we would like people to believe, especially when you're a young man or even a middle-aged man. You know, you make people believe you can do this, you can do that, you can run this far, you can walk this far, and life will show you that you're not nearly as robust or virile or strong as you proclaim. Um, some of you who are um, people who cook are not nearly as great a cook as you like people to believe. You know, you are, you ought to have your own TV show, the way you talk about how well you can cook and the nature of your baking. And some of you are good, but sometimes we're not nearly as good as we would like to be. Sometimes we catch the fish that is this big but we tell people it is this big. We sometimes exaggerate. And, and that's the human element of pride. That's pride afoot that makes us boast. That's why the Bible says it is wrong for you to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have self-esteem. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a level of confidence in your ability, a level of confidence in your expertise or your experience. But do not, the Bible says, think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But soberly, that means you have to have a serious view of and a realistic and an honest view of yourself, especially when it comes with your walk with God. Walking with Jesus Christ is a continuum. It's a journey. It's not, and, 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 it, and it's really a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not something that you will do in one day. It's not something you will do in one week. You will spend the rest of your life living to please God. And you will spend the rest of your life growing in that life to please God. And so it's, it's, it's not, an attempt to impress anybody. It's not an attempt to show off for anybody. It's not an attempt to be greater than you actually are. It is simply saying, Lord, I want to please you. And I want to please you knowing that I have some struggles, that I have some inconsistencies, I have some failings, I have some self doubts and self-recriminations and things that I need to work on. Lord, I want to do some things. 
Oh, God. And if, and if I could be honest, there's some things I want to do for God. There's some things I want to progress. There's some areas of life that I want to achieve spiritually. But honesty forces me to say I'm not there yet. And there's no point in me saying I'm there when I know I'm not there. There's no point in, and I know some folks say, well, Bishop, don't, shouldn't we ought to confess it? Yeah, confession is you saying about yourself what God already knows. That's confession. When you confess to God, you are saying to him what he already knows. That's why you can't shock God. That's why you can't surprise God. That's why you can't in some way say, God, you didn't know this about me, but let me tell you. No, God knows everything about you. End from the beginning. He knows it all. And so you are always better off when you engage in prayer in an honest dialogue with him. That's why secret closet prayer is so important. That's why even gathering like this is important, because even though we're all on the prayer line and everybody's chatting in, it is still a private time that you can talk to the Lord about the real issues that you're facing. It is a private time when you can talk to the Lord about what is really going on. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, go into your secret closet and close the door. Oh God, because there's some things that nobody needs to hear. There's some things that nobody needs to have insight in. There are some things that are intimately private between you and Jesus Christ. But he said, if you pray secretly, oh my God, he will reward you openly. He will make sure that what you prayed about comes to pass. He will make sure that what you have in, what you have um, laid before him, what you have honestly talked to him about, is going to come to pass. And people will see the results without knowing what you went through to get where you are. People will see the results, but let's not, let, let, let's not be unreal. And so Jesus has this encounter with Peter, and Peter is an interesting figure in Scripture because Peter is a true human being. He is a true person. He is true in so many ways because he reflects the fact that most of us want to be better than we actually are. And we want to appear sometimes better than we actually are. And Peter is a classic representation of that. He really wants to be, he, I, he loves the Lord. He's a sincere, I believe he's a sincere disciple in his intent, in his desires, but he doesn't always have the fortitude to follow through on what he proclaims. Yeah, he believes it. He wants it. He's going after it. But in so many ways, Peter is not where he thinks he is, or at least not where he proclaims that he is. He, he, he says it. This is what I am, Lord. This is who I am. This is what I proclaim to be. But when the evidence of it starts to come in his face, he sees something very different. Hallelujah. There are a couple of instances about this, one of which I'm going to, I'll share one and maybe two. But the first one is with respect to him walking on the water. Jesus goes out and walks on the water and the disciples are on the ship. They look out on the, the, the storm hits and the waves are crashing against the boat. Water's coming in the boat. The wind is tempestuous. And then suddenly they look out and they see Jesus walking on the water. He's walking. They're, they're already scared of the storm. And now they're scared of Jesus because people don't walk on water. But here is Jesus walking on the water. Everybody else is frightened. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come out and walk with you. Now. That's Peter. I may have said, Lord, if it's you, get in the boat. But Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come and let me walk with you on the water. So Jesus says, come on, Peter. And Peter steps out and it is it is a faith move because it is totally driven by the word of Jesus. Come step out, walk on the water. But the moment Peter gets out there and this is really where because we have a desire sometimes. But until we're confronted with the reality of the moment, we have a desire spiritually of what we want to be, what we claim to be, what we would like to be. And it's fine until we are confronted with the reality. Peter wanted to walk on the water and Peter believed believed he could walk on the water. But the moment he stepped out and started walking with Jesus on the water, as long as he was focused on Jesus, as long as he was looking at Jesus, he could do it. But when he heard the wind and when he saw the waves, the reality of what he saw and what he heard in the natural 
undermined his faith. And suddenly he began to sink and he sinks and he cries, Lord, save me. And the Lord reaches out and said, why did you doubt? As long as you were believing, oh, hallelujah, you could walk on this water. And guess what? Many of us, as long as our faith is focused, we can do a number of things. We can overcome a number of obstacles. We can achieve a number of blessings. But the moment something undermines our faith, the natural reality, reality, fear, what somebody else is saying, what somebody else is doing. The moment our faith is undermined, guess what? We're going to begin to sink. That's why we have to ask God, Lord, strengthen our faith. Lord, strengthen our faith. Lord, strengthen our fortitude because something is coming that will undermine your confession. Something is coming that if you are not focused, it will undermine what you say you believe about Jesus. It will undermine what you say you will do for Jesus. That's why I'm asking the question, are you really sure? Because they're having this conversation. I'm getting ready to close. They're having this conversation. And he says, Lord, I want to go with you in so many words. Where are you going? And Jesus said, well, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. But afterwards, you can follow me. And he was talking about a couple of things. He was talking about his death, that Peter, you're going to die. and You're going to die on a cross, but not now. You're not ready to die now. I've got things that I have to do. You're not ready to die now. Hallelujah. But afterwards, you can follow me. And Peter says, Lord, why can't I follow you now? Now, it's interesting that the Lord says this because there are some things that we can do later, but we cannot do them now. We have to grow. We have to be fortified. We have to be developed. And so Jesus is saying, yeah, you're going to do it, but not now. One day, Peter will die hanging upside down on a cross, condemned by the Roman government, but not now. He wasn't ready now. He thought he was, but he wasn't ready. Thought he was ready to make this challenge, take this step. He thought he was ready to go at this, at, at this level. And Jesus says, he says, I'll lay down. Peter says, I'll lay down my life for you. I'm willing to die for you, Jesus. That's how much I love you. I'm willing to die for you. And then Jesus says, you will lay down your life for my sake. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say to thee, say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. You're going to face a challenge that is going to show you your level of faith, your level of commitment, your level of trust, your level of confidence, your level of perseverance. Life shows you that. Life shows you how committed you really are, what sacrifice you're willing to make. And sometimes we're dead on it. What we said we would do is what we do. We have been empowered by the Holy Ghost to do it. We have been strengthened by life to do it. We have been fortified and, 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 and prayer and the study of the word and your time with God prepares you for the challenge you may have to face, challenges that we will face. But there are some things that, that life is going to expose in us. And if we aren't sure, it's going to show up. Life will expose it. Everybody can make bold proclamations. Everybody can make bold confessions. But the time will come when your confession has to be lived. And the purpose of this time is to pray so that we don't fail in that moment. That moment. The Lord wants us to examine ourselves, to be sure. Make your calling an election Sure. Make your calling and election sure. Be sure. Be sure. Be sure and know that, Lord, when you call upon me, I can respond. Praying, growing. I'm not here to undermine anybody's faith. I'm here to ask you to self-examine and determine 
And most of all, ask the Lord, where do I stand? Where do I need to grow? Where do I need to progress? Absolutely, it's personal. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this brand new day. Thank you for last night's rest. Thank you for waking us this morning and bringing us together with our brothers and sisters from across the world, Lord, just to spend time in prayer with you, just to talk with you, just to, hey, Shatama, share with you, just to fellowship together in prayer. We thank you for this awesome privilege, Lord, that you have provided to us. We thank you, my God, for life and health and strength another day. We thank you, God, because you have never failed us. And God, you have never come short of your promises. You've never come short of your word. God, as we pray this morning, Lord, we first humbly ask forgiveness. My God, for anything that we have done, anything, my God, that has displeased you, anything that we have failed to do, oh God, that we were supposed to do. Lord, we come before you now, opening our hearts and our minds to you, to examine us, oh God, to have mercy upon us, to wash us in your precious blood, and my God, to forgive us so that we can go on, fortify and make us, Lord, what you would have us to be. And Lord, we come, Lord, oh God, to put ourselves before before, oh God, your examination, to put us, oh God, our each individual, Lord, before, oh God, your scrutiny, my God, the light of your countenance. Lord, because in your light, we see ourselves as we really are. Lord, we're praying that you would give us a real picture of ourselves, not an inflated picture, not, oh God, a picture that is designed to impress people. And Lord, we're not trying to impress you because we know you know everything about us. Oh, Shatana Masete, oh, Oh, God, there is nothing that is not naked and open, oh God, unto you, Lord. Nothing you don't know, nothing you don't see, nothing you aren't aware of. So, Lord, we bring the totality of ourselves before you. We bring our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits, our bodies before you, God. Oh, God, Lord, search us, Lord, know us, and Lord, help us to know ourselves. Oh, shitanabo sataye, help us, my God. Oh, God, help us to know ourselves, Lord, help us to understand ourselves. Ourselves. Oh God, because life, oh God, is going to face all of us. Lord, we're all going to face some realities in life. Oh God, some of them pleasant, some of them unpleasant. Lord, we're going to face some trouble. We're going to face some challenges. We're going to face some difficulties. And Lord, we don't want to face it, oh God, believing falsehoods about ourselves. We want to face it knowing, Lord, that you are with us. We want to face it knowing, oh God, that you're standing beside us. We want to face it knowing, God, that we can be sure about our confidence in you. Lord, we're not confident in ourselves because in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. There is nothing good about this flesh. There is nothing sustainable about this flesh. But Lord, when we stand in you, oh God, we stand in power. We stand in victory. We stand in authority. We stand in life. We stand in love. We stand in faith, my God, because we stand in you. Help us, oh God, Shataye, to put our confidence in you. Help Help us, Hashitanobo Sataye. Oh God, to put our faith in you. Help us to rely and to lean upon you. Lord God, not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you because you will direct our path. My God, there are challenges facing all of us. Lord, there are challenges for every individual that is on this call this morning. But Lord, we have confidence in you that God, you're standing beside us, that God, you're standing with us, that Lord. Lord, you got satana. You're gonna stand up in us, Ashita. Oh God, to face every challenge, my God. Lord, if we're honest and we're humble, you promise never to leave us. You promise never to forsake us. You promise to be with us always, even to the end of the world. So God, we're standing, oh God, before you. Oh God, in honest confession, in honest submission. Lord God, asking you, Gashetanama, oh God, to make us who we are. Lord, let us always be 
real. But God, as we're real, God, elevate us. As we're real, strengthen us that we might face the test, that we might face the challenge, that we might face the trial. My God, and never deny you, but always own. Oh God, who you are. Always own our connection with you. God, give us boldness through the Holy Ghost. Oh, Give us boldness through the power of the Spirit. Lord, to live and to walk by your word. Lord, to live in confidence and in faith. Oh God, and to be sure that you're with us, God. To be sure that you're standing by us and to be sure that we will stand in the evil day. God, these are evil times and we're praying for the strength of the church. My God, remember every believer today. Oh God, remember every church. Remember every congregation. My God, remember them in a special way, God. Oh, Oh God, no matter whether they're meeting virtually or whether they're meeting in person safely, my God, remember and cover and protect them. God, look on every apostle, prophet, oh God, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Oh God, strengthen them. Every bishop, every elder, every mother, missionary. Oh God, young person, psalmist. Oh God, believer in every congregation. God, strengthen us, make us, fortify us, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, for the prayer requests that have shown up on the line this morning and the prayer requests that have come, oh God, all day. Oh God, we're praying right now for deliverance. God, we're praying for healing. Oh, Shatana Masiataye for the sick. Lord, remember Mother Clark today. Oh my God. Remember, oh God, Martha, Sister, Lady Martha Velasquez. Oh God, in Santa Domingo. My God, remember Ikatanobo Satanaye. Oh God, Pastor. Oh God, Jackson. Remember Sister Perry, my God. Remember, oh God, Pastor Dykes, Lord. Remember, my God. Oh God, everyone that said pray for me. Remember, oh God, Pastor and Lady Hill today. Remember, Pastor and Lady Daniels today. My God. God, you're a healer. Remember, my God, Minister Allen right now. Oh, God, remember Deacon Ganey, Lord. Stretch out your hand and touch, Lord. Heal and raise up because we know that you're able. God, we trust your promise today. Oh, God, that you're the unfailing God, and there is nothing too hard for you, God. Lord, God, do it because we know that you're able. Oh, God, make a way for somebody right now, somebody that has a need, somebody. Oh, God, remember Joanne and Gary today. Oh, Oh, God, stretch out your hand in the name of Jesus. Lord God, move. Oh, God, remember my Renee right now. Oh, God, strengthen them, Lord. Remember every family, God, every couple, every marriage, every relationship, God. Oh, God, where the enemy has come, oh, God, to wreak havoc. Oh, God, come to create dysfunction. We plead the blood now. Oh, God, and we pray for love and peace. Oh, God, to abide in every household, every relationship, mothers and fathers. Oh, Shatanamo Satana. Sisters and brothers, my God. Oh God, siblings, cousins. Oh God, networks, God, wherever they are. Father, let them abide in the harmony that only comes from you. God, I'm praying today, oh God, for our families. Oh God, that may be incarcerated. My God, Lord, stretch out your hand. Lord, remember and save and deliver, God. Oh God, you can go behind the prison bars. You can go where we cannot go. Oh God, and you can save, my God, to the utmost. So God, stretch out your hand right now because your arm is not too short that it cannot save. My God, your ear is open to our cry. Lord God, look on the bereaved families. Oh God, look on them, Lord. Oh God, the tailors. Oh God, strengthen them now. Oh God, the Brian Hopkins family, Lord. Oh God, the McLean Melvin family. My God, the White family. Oh God, remember Ellen today, God, in a special way. Oh God, remember Georgia today in a special way. Remember Angie. Remember, oh God, Lady Davis. Remember, oh God, our entire family, the Davis family. Oh God, as we laid to rest, my cousin. Lord God, I want you to touch and strengthen. Lord, you know the whole, oh God, that loss does. You know what it creates in people's hearts and minds. But Lord, you are a man of sorrow and you're acquainted with grief. So God, bring the comfort of your spirit now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, oh Shanarobo Satana, for worship today, whether it's virtual or in person. I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to be upon every preacher. I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to be upon every believer. Lord, saturate the atmosphere with your anointing, my God, to the end that lives are changed. People are convicted of their sin. People come to the altar to be saved. Backsliders are restored. Lives are changed, my God. Lord God, give us revival in this season. Give us a move of 
of God in this season. Oh, Shatanobo Siatana, strengthen the church, God. Oh, God, we want to be sure. We want to walk in authority. We want to walk in faith. We want to walk. Oh, Shatanobo Satanaye. Oh, God, strengthen us, God. Make us. Oh, Shantanobo Sata. Mold us, shape us. Oh, God, into what we shall be. God bless every first responder, every teacher, every pupil, whether they're online or in person, every family, cover and protect. God, bring these numbers down. Oh, God, bring these numbers down, my God. Let us act in faith and wisdom in the name of Jesus. And Lord, do what you promised us. Oh, God, we pray for the government today. We pray for the nation today. Oh, God, look on and solve. Oh, God, Lord, take out, oh, God, the hatred that seems to permeate our society. Oh, God, the deception, the lies, my God. Oh, God, bring deliverance, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, touch today, God. Bless us today, God, as only you can. And Lord, we'll give your name the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ashataye. Woo. Katanobo Satanaye. Shanabasi. Yay, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody give God praise. Hallelujah. Everybody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Mm. <clears throat> hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We love him today. We love him. We love him. Oh, God, we love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. That's right. Hallelujah. We love him. Hallelujah. We adore him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Here's my confession today. Because of my faith in Jesus Christ, I am sure. Because of my faith in Jesus Christ, not because of me, not because of my longevity, not because of how long I've been in church, not because of my family, but because of my faith in Jesus Christ, I am sure. Hallelujah. Because of my faith in Jesus, the God who has never failed me, the God who has never forsaken me, because of my faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. I am sure. Hallelujah. He's holding me. He's keeping me. He's sustaining me. He's giving me life. He's giving me grace. Oh, hallelujah. Because of my faith in him, because of my faith in him, bless God, I am sure. Because of my faith in Jesus, oh God, it's not my own volition. It's not my own ability. It's my faith in Jesus Christ. Because of my faith in Jesus, Hallelujah. I am sure. I am sure because of my faith. Hallelujah. Oh, God, my faith is going to hold me. My faith is going to keep me. My faith is going to sustain me because of my faith in Jesus. Oh, my God, I am sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am sure. Thank God today for all of you who have joined us in prayer and you can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. Hallelujah. You can stay connected with us all day um, at um, 10 o'clock. We'll be having our Sunday school hour, which will air on Facebook and on Zoom at 1130. Our morning worship will take place in the Sanctuary Refuge Temple, but it'll be available online through our Facebook page. And you can join us at 1130 at three o'clock. The women's department has an activity um, that is going to be exciting. They're having a painting party. And then at 6 p.m. tonight, we continue our church anniversary. And tonight is the women of worship. You know, we've been airing our Sunday evening Zooms and face on Facebook of the gathering. And it's been a celebration of our church. And so we've had um, members share expressions. We've had various preachers who have come through and blessed our church over the last 25 years. And we've also had um we had last last week Apostle Clark and Apostle Parrot with us. Well, tonight we're going to have the women who have come in down through the years 
and shared with Refuge Temple, shared with our church in a powerful way. And we're, we're going to have them with us tonight. We have Mother Joan Keith. We have Dr. Pamela Davenport. We have um, Lady um, Dorothy Wise. We have Lady Tammy Perry. We have um, Pastor Susie Wright. We have a number of women of God who have come in. They've shared. They've taught. They've ministered to the women of our church and to our church down through the years. And we're going to share with them on tonight at six o'clock. So you can join us and you can also be a blessing to the church anniversary. We're still in the midst of celebration. And if you want to celebrate with us and you want to send a gift um, of any size that will bless the anniversary, we certainly do appreciate that. And we thank God for that. And we thank God for you. You can so into Refuge Temple. Um, our mailing address is P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, um, 27215. Or you can give online if you so choose, and that is on our website, refugetemplenc.com, or our cash app, which is simply the dollar sign, the number one, Refuge. So once again, you can mail a gift to P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215, or you can give online at refugetemplenc.com, www.refugetemplenc.com, or our cash app, which is simply the dollar sign, the number one refuge. And we thank all of you, first of all, just for being in prayer. I look, I look forward to this fellowship every morning and all of you who come in from different parts of the country and from literally around the world that share in this fellowship. So thank you for praying with me. And I'm hoping that you're praying for me as well as praying with me in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your giving. Those who have given gifts, we thank you for that. God bless you and God bless Give it back to you in many fold in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm looking forward to what's going to be a great day. Um, if you choose to come to public worship at Refuge Temple, know that we've taken steps to make sure that you're safe. We disinfect. We wipe down. We um, fog the air. We do all of those things. We've got UV um, lighting in our heating and air system so that as the air circulates, it zaps the germs. We're just doing that to make sure we're safe. We wear masks, we socially distance, all right, and we do what we can to keep everybody safe. So please, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're praying for you, praying that God would bless you in a wonderful way, and praying that God would fortify your faith for whatever challenge you are facing right now. God will fortify your faith so you can say confidently and honestly, I I am sure. God bless you today. Have a wonderful day. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.